transfer cells and ergastic substances. Table of contents. Transfer cells. Transfer cells are specialized parenchyma cells containing cell wall ingrowths, which increase the surface area of plasma membrane. They develop late in cell maturation and deposit on primary wall, hence considered a specialized secondary wall. They are actively involved in solute transport. Diagrams illustrating known locations of transfer cells in frequently studied systems. Position of transfer cells is indicated by slashes. They are usually confined to only one area of a cell, and are often found in tissues. They occur in a wide range of locations in the plant body. Each of these locations is a potential site of intensive short-distance solute transfer. Morphologically two categories of wall ingrowths can be recognized for most transfer cells. First is reticulate and second flange. We also have wall ingrowths of uncertain morphology and transfer cells exhibiting both categories of wall ingrowth morphology. The examples are shown in the images. Reticulate type wall ingrowth. They originate as small, randomly distributed papillae. The papillae then branch and fuse laterally to form a complex labyrinth. For example, reticulate wall ingrowths in xylem parenchyma transfer cells in root nodule of Vicia faba. Flange-type wall ingrowths. They arise as curvilinear, rib-shaped projections. The projections become variously elaborated in different transfer cell types. For example, flange wall ingrowth in xylem parenchyma transfer cells of Avtritica mestivum. Functions of transfer cells. They are involved in short-distance translocation of solutes. Based on their ontogeny they may be of a type or B-type. They help in the nutrition and growth of various reproductive structures and in the development of lateral roots. They are involved in various secretory tissues involved with the secretion of various substances. They also help in drawing nutrients for the parasite from the host, in digestive gland cells of carnivorous plants and in providing nutrition to the bacteria involved in the formation of root nodule in legumes. Ergastic substances. All compounds stored by plants are products of metabolism. These organic and inorganic byproducts of metabolism are called ergastic substances. These substances are found in the cell wall, in the cytosol, and in organelles, including vacuoles. Here is a flowchart which shows different types of ergastic substances which are namely, starch grains, proteins, lipids, tannins, crystals and silica bodies. Starch grains. They are the most commonly found solid particles found in parenchyma cells of the cortex, fleshy leaves and in the endosperm of seeds. They appear in different forms, but in the majority of cases they are spherical or egg-shaped. Here are some examples of starch grains. Starch develops within the plastids. As the grain enlarges the plastid swells and its contents usually are displaced to one side of the grain, so that most of the grain is covered by a very thin layer of plastid material. Gila layer. In many plants it is possible to distinguish concentric layering in the starch grain laid down successively around the hilum. 
In compound grain several such gila are present. Maltese cross pattern. Starch is optically anisotropic and under polarized light, shows a Maltese cross. Proteins. Proteins may occur in the form of crystalloids in the cytosol as, for example, in parenchyma cells of the potato tuber. Proteinaceous crystalloids also occur in the nuclei. Such nuclear inclusions are widespread in occurrence among vascular plants. Development. Storage proteins may be formed in different ways, depending in part upon whether they are composed of salt-soluble globulins or alcohol-soluble prolamins. Globulins are the major storage proteins in legumes, and prolamins in most cereals. Here is an image of immature vascular bundle, surrounded by storage parenchyma cells, in cotyledon of Arabidopsis thaliana embryo where OB represents oil bodies and PB represents globoid containing protein bodies. Lipids. Oils and fats and other compounds with lipid characteristics, such as waxes, suberin and cutin, are also ergastic substances. Usually they are found in liquid form as oil bodies. Crystalline forms are rare. Oil bodies. Oil bodies are more or less spherical structures that impart a granular appearance to the cytoplasm of a plant cell. They are also known as spherosomes or oleosomes, arise by the accumulation of triacylglycerol molecules at specific sites in the interior of the ER lipid bilayer. Waxes. They are long-chain lipid compounds, that occur as part of the protective coating, cuticle, on the epidermis of the aerial parts of the primary plant body and on the inner surface of the primary wall of cork cells in woody roots and stems. Tannins. They are a heterogeneous group of polyphenolic substances, important secondary metabolites, with an astringent taste and an ability to tan leather. They usually are divided into two categories, hydrolyzable and condensed. Here are some images showing the location of tannins. The presence of tannins in special cells or cell layers can, nevertheless, be used as a diagnostic character even if their chemical identity is not known. Tihi function of tannins is also little understood. They may act as an ultraviolet light shield. Crystals. They are the byproducts of the metabolic processes of the cell. The shape of crystals in plants varies very greatly. They may be solitary, rhomboidal, octahedral, or very much elongated. Idioblasts are cells that differ distinctly from the surrounding cells in both shape and structure. Raphids are usually found in very large cells which, when mature, do not contain a living protoplast, but which are filled with mucilage. These are some images showing idioblasts and raphids. There are five types of calcium oxalate crystals namely, prismatic crystals, raphids, druses, styloids and crystal sand. Here are some more images of different types of calcium oxalate crystals. An interesting fact. The location and type of calcium oxalate crystals within a given taxon may be very consistent and, hence, useful in taxonomic classification. The examples are given below. Calcium carbonate crystals. They are not common in seed plants. The best-known calcium carbonate formations are cystoliths which are formed in specialized enlarged cells called lithocysts of the ground parenchyma and epidermis. For example, in leaf of ficus.
Silica often forms bodies, termed silica bodies or phytoliths, within the lumen of the cell. They normally occur in special cells, stegmata, next to fibers or other lignified tissues, or in the epidermal cells, particularly those near to fibrous cells associated with bundle sheaths. Here are some images of various silica body morphologies. Appearance. Silica bodies are amorphous and not crystalline in structure, they can be distinguished from crystals by simple tests. Function. They help in the strengthening of stems and provides resistance to attack by pathogenic fungi and predaceous chewing insects and other herbivores. References used in the presentation. Thank you. Hope you liked this presentation of mine.